If your truck has a plastic drop-in bed liner, you'll need to remove some of the bulkhead portion. Here's what you need to do. Beginning 5 inches from the bulkhead panel, mark the depth of cut on the bed liner. This depth will be equal to the depth of the roll-in lock housing you're installing. Then use a straight edge to draw your cut line. To make the cuts, use a circular saw with a plywood blade to remove the bulkhead portion of the liner. Also, be sure to trim the bed liner's plastic tailgate panel. Refer to step 1 in the written installation guide to get the measurements for cutting. Some of you may have an over-the-rail bed liner. If you do, check out the written installation guide for the modifications you'll need to make to it. Now it's time to install the housing. Get a buddy to help you place the housing assembly onto the bed rails and center it. Don't fasten the housing in place, not yet. Now lift the lid on the housing and lean it against the cab. Place a rag between the lid and cab to prevent scratches. Next, let's install the tracks. First, make sure to leave the pull strap connected to the threaded shipping stud. Then rotate the lock lever to the 10 o'clock position. Tape to the bottom of the track clamps you'll find L-shaped bed clamp sections. Remove them. Because these are location specific, be sure to lay them in the bed in the same order as you remove them from the tracks. Now carefully place the tracks on the bed rails and key them onto the housing stems. Be sure that the handle is properly engaged into the tracks. Attach the back clamps very loosely to the tracks, just to be sure that the tracks don't fall off the bed rail while you're working. Use number 10 24 by half inch truss head screws and cargo nuts to secure the tracks to the housing stems. Tighten securely. Then attach the remaining clamps very loosely. Don't tighten them, not yet. Now we're going to install the tailgate extrusion. Begin by lowering the tailgate. Use a tape measure to locate and mark the center of the tailgate. Then measure to locate and mark the center of the tailgate extrusion. Hold the tailgate extrusion square and centered on the tailgate. Use a number 8 by 3 quarter inch self-tapping screw and power screw gun to secure the hole nearest the center. Next, move to each end and press the tailgate extrusion to the top of the tailgate in order to make it conform to the contour of the tailgate. Secure it in place. Install the remaining self-tapping screws, making sure to provide even spacing between them. With the tailgate extrusion secured, carefully close the tailgate. You don't want to strike the ends of the tracks. Now we're going to line up the tracks with the tailgate. Move to the front of the bed. Lift up slightly on the housing and shift each side back toward the tailgate so that the track end caps contact the inside surface of the tailgate. The track end cap metal blocks must also contact the tailgate extrusion end caps. If the tracks aren't positioned as shown, the latch mechanism won't work. With the tracks in the correct position, tighten the clamps hand tight plus one quarter turn in the order shown. Make sure the tracks remain level. Don't use a power or pneumatic screw gun. Over tightening the track clamps can cause an indentation in the bed rails. Now it's time to install the cargo shield and the drain tubes. First, trim the track gasket one inch from the end of the track. Then rotate the lock lever to 7 o'clock, which is the latched position. Now remove the plastic wing nut 
and detach the pole strap from the threaded stud. Pull the cover closed so it latches to the tailgate. Don't allow the cover to retract while the housing lid is open. Before you lower the housing lid, turn the lid pin knobs a quarter turn clockwise. This will cause the pins to pop in if they're not already. Now you can lower the housing lid. Be sure that the lid pins snap into the receptors located on the tracks. To open the cover, pull back slightly on the handle to relieve spring tension from the latch mechanisms. Then turn the lock lever clockwise to 10 o'clock. That's the unlatched position. Use the quarter 20 by half inch truss head screws and rubber washers to secure the cargo shield. The rubber washers go on the inside of the cargo shield. Now use a half inch bit to drill two holes for the drain tubes. This is easier if you drill a quarter inch pilot hole first. Align the holes with the drain fittings that protrude from the bottom of the housing assembly. If your truck has factory drain holes or bulkhead plugs, use them by running the drain tubes to the existing drain holes. Finally, always make sure the pull strap is securely clipped to a fixed point in the bed. You're just about done, so let's test it out. To close the cover, pull the pole strap hand over hand. Allow the excess strap to fall into the bed until you can reach the handle. Place your hands evenly spread on the handle and pull it until it contacts the tailgate extrusion. To open the cover, pull back slightly on the handle. This relieves the spring tension from the latch mechanism. Turn the lock lever clockwise to the 10 o'clock position. When the cover is retracted, hold the pull strap and allow it to slip through your fingers. The cover must retract with just enough force to rotate and reset the lock lever and latching mechanism. Finally, we're going to check out the hinged lid and make any necessary adjustments. To open. With the cover latched to the tailgate, grasp the latch pin knobs, pull out, and turn the knobs 90 degrees. This holds the pin in the unlock position. Grasp the lid and lift. You can rest the lid against the back of the cab while you do any maintenance or cleaning. If the lid is loose, loosen the nylon nut on each lid latch bracket. Now move the top half of the bracket one notch toward the tailgate. Tighten both nuts and close the lid. If the lid is tight, raise the lid and loosen the nylon nut on each lid latch bracket. Move the top half of the bracket one notch toward the housing. Tighten both the nuts and close the lid. Repeat if further adjustments are needed. Begin by aligning the mounting holes in the cargo manager tracks with the matching holes in the roll-in lock tracks. You're going to secure each side with four truss head screws and cargo nuts. Just hand tighten the screws. Don't use a power or pneumatic screw gun. With the actuator levers to the driver's side, insert one tram in each end of the cargo manager divider. There's a driver's side tram and a passenger side tram. Be sure you insert them into the correct ends. Begin by inserting the front wheels in the tracks. Next, squeeze the actuator levers together and rotate the divider, inserting the rear wheels in the tracks. Squeeze and hold the linkage control levers, and the cargo manager divider should glide effortlessly along the tracks. Release the levers, and the divider should snap into the first available location slot in the direction you're traveling. Also, by squeezing the linkage control levers, you can rotate the divider upward to a horizontal position to clear the way for long loads. And that's all there is to it. Hey, congratulations. At this point, you're good to go. Thank you for choosing Roll and Lock.